You'd be surprised how well the truth can work in our favor. Hey guys, welcome back to the Convo Couch. My name is Connie. This is my co-host son, and today we have our very special guest, Matthew Grego, who is an actor, a voiceover presenter, and a radio show host. So thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. So Matthew, you've had a lot of different experiences. What did you do before you entered the acting world? Prior to acting, I was in community radio. Community radio, mm -hmm. and what got you into that? I needed a creative outlet. I just found life rather mundane, so <laughs> I thought I'd give it a shot. Nice. Did you, when you say it was mundane, do you mean that you had a stereotypical office job or what mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. That's exactly right. And so you decided to just do that on the side for some side work? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, excellent. So you were in community radio and that was like an office job for you, like you weren't sort of like a voiceover or radio presenter? No, well, I was just working just regular nine to five. Okay. Um, found Triple H up in Hornsby, who was mm. still going strong. Yeah. And they had a very inclusive, very progressive presenter training course. Mm. They were trying to get as many presenters through the door as they could because they had such a high turnover. Wow. Why is there such a high turnover in radio presenting? Some people don't realize it's not all it's cracked up to be okay. because it's a volunteer organization. You mm. do have to volunteer your time. You can't just go in and do your shift and then leave. You okay. actually have to throw yourself into other aspects of it. Okay. What are those aspects? You have to get involved because it's a volunteer organization, say in fundraising, mm. um, looking for sponsors. Personally, I got involved with a presenter training scheme, so training other presenters. Okay. And it was really satisfying mm. watching them um, implementing the skills yeah. that I'd imparted to them. You have such a beautiful low voice and I can completely understand why you're in radio. Did that develop through the course or did you just naturally, as you were growing up, realise you have a very good voice? I was born with it. You were born with it? <laughs> so I thought, well, I'm, I may as well do something with it. That's amazing. Did people, when you were growing up, comment on your voice and say you could be on radio or you just kind of thought, I have the strength, I'm going to use it? Um, some people said that. The majority of them sort of backed away. Oh, really? <laughs> They're not used to coming across as something of that uh, timbre in everyday yes. life. Yes. So when you say you're so when you were, you were 13 and you were just like, hi, everyone, I'm mm -hmm. Matthew. You just had that mesmerizing voice from 13. Mm -hmm. Dead silence. <laughs> you can hear it from that. And then because of his quite an authoritative voice, as you said, do you feel like that has affected the roles that you get when you're doing acting? To a certain extent, yeah. Yes. Um, you're born with a certain sound, you're born with mm. a certain look, I suppose, and that's one thing I found when I talk about acting, just play to your strengths. Yes. Because it's all good fun regardless. Mm, mm -hmm. And which roles have you played? Primarily I get cast as either, say, authority figures or psychopaths or somewhere in between. Do you have your family and your friends who watch you on screen and go, oh my gosh, you're so scary, I can't believe that's you? Uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> Can you give like an example of when they were shocked? Um, my mother. Yeah. My mother's a great example. She says, oh, I hate it when you play those roles. Yeah. I don't really do. <laughs> that's not you. I'm still, I'm still so curious though about how, when it all finishes, how do you just kind of like, okay, I'm back to reality. Cause surely you're in this fog, two months, you're this crazy, sick character. And mm -hmm. then you just kind of leave it and you're like, hi family and friends. Sorry, I've been a bit weird in the last two months, but I'm back. Mm -hmm. You don't have a choice but to become normal again. <laughs> Integrate into society. Integrate back into society. Like yeah. almost culture shock to yourself. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Uh, but does part of you just love that thrill? Is that kind of why you keep doing it? Because it's almost this escapism? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it comes down to, like I was saying before, creativity, imagination. If you have a flair for that kind of thing, there's no reason why you shouldn't capitalize mm. on that. So good. Mm. And I think your family would be understanding as well, right? Like you mentioned, they were all part of like in and around the media mm. industry. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned your mom was um, like, uh, she was working in behind TV. the scenes in TV. That's right. Like, at a desk. Um, and your dad or your sisters and brothers? No, it's just basically my mother and my cousin. Okay. Mm. 
and uh, I sort of carried on from that. I wouldn't say that it's a family tradition. It's just <laughs> certain members of our family have found um, a niche for themselves mm. in that and related areas. Yeah, wow. It's oh. amazing. Gosh. And do you have um, do you have friends who are also in that industry and they're like, can completely understand or people just go, I don't understand why you do it? There are people who've questioned it in the past. Uh, there are also people who said, oh, so... You're an actor, how much do you get paid for that? Oh. <laughs> Doesn't always work that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I do it for my passion. <laughs> That's right. Particularly on uh, student film projects. That's actually a very good grounding. Mm. Um, and that's the good thing about Star Now. A lot of film schools, mm. they put out casting calls. Yeah. And, I mean, sometimes they'll surprise you with a token payment. But in mm. the end, they're learning and you're learning. Yeah, it's all about that learning process, isn't it? Where you're That's bouncing right. off each other. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. So if you're starting out, a film school is definitely the way to go. Yeah, yeah, mm. definitely. What intrigues me is your experience with the Korean network. Mm -hmm. What did you do there? That was actually just a one-off. That okay. was a um, it was a soap opera called Fly Again. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's still running, mm. but. I was the, that was very early in my acting career. Mm -hmm. um, they, this particular Korean film crew, they're actually filming at Hornsby Hospital. Oh, nice. Uh, some scene <laughs> where one of the flight attendant's parents was having a myocardial infarction or something like Yeah, that. yeah. And I was just going to be a doctor in the background doing mm. whatever. <laughs> but the assistant director took one look at me for some strange reason, and um, he pointed me and yelled, talk, 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 talk. As oh, okay, that's my, <laughs> my first, uh, my speaking, first role. speaking role. <laughs> so on the fly, they just wrote a few lines for me, and um, that was it. Ken, do you remember those lines? No. <laughs> okay, Connie, name three things that are edible. Chocolate, honey, Peas. Pretty good. Yeah. And that's when the time is up. So she got that point. <laughs> Alright, cool. Um, okay. Matt. Alright, so same question? No, no different, different question. questions. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a question at you and you've got five seconds to answer it. Okay. Three things. Uh -huh. yeah. Name three actresses that has names starting with Jennifer. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lawrence. Um, Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I right? was like, I'm pretty sure those are the Is that Jennifer Hudson? Yeah, I think that's yes, the one that we guessed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Come on, bring it on. Come on. Um, name three states in the United States. California? <laughs> New York? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, that was really bad. Um, Utah? Is that the <laughs> states? I don't know. Alright. You're okay. like, yes, yes it is. Sorry. Oh my god, I got it. I don't know if you got it. Uh, New York State is is actually a start. Thank you. All right. What do you know about you? Cool. Good <laughs> job. Um, name three. What oh, should I make you name? Um, name three sour food. So name three. Could we stop? <laughs> name three what? Sour foods. All right. Ready? Yeah. Lemons, limes. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? You're like, oh, so I would have said, yeah, fruits as well. I don't know. What is a fruit? Sour foods. Uh, yeah, oh, foods could be anything. Yeah. Oh, I would have said like um, the sour Coke cans, the sour Coke lollies. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to go with like sweet, but sweets? Like, nah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, one cool. more, we'll do one more round. Because I'm ready. No worries. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll give you a hard one then. Like, oh, not, not like you. That was pretty hard. Yeah, that was pretty hard actually. I don't know what, where it came from. Uh, Name three actors with the name starting with Michael. Oh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael. Oh, Michael Page? Oh Michael. My God, I don't know. You don't even know. Michael Douglas? Do you know anything? I would have said Michael Douglas, Michael Palin. Um, yeah, Douglas is like the only one I would have known. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah that's hard. Sure, I don't know Michael's on yeah, there, surprisingly. I, you know, my old boss was called Michael, so I <laughs> <laughs> just come up with one right there. Um, okay. All right, Matthew. I think you're in to win then because I just totally stopped that one up. Name three actors starting with the name Matthew. Matthew McConaughey, Matthew Broderick. I'm done. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.